Monotypes can be made with watercolors and a non-porous surface, such as plexiglass or mylar. There are several approaches to this technique. In this video, I will demonstrate two. In order to make watercolor monotypes, you will need a few things. First, you will need a substrate to paint on. I am using a sheet of plexiglass. However, frosted mylar and plexiglass hit with fine sandpaper will allow for less surface tension. Second, you will need watercolors. I am using whole bean watercolors, but have experimented with other brands as well. Third, you will need a small cup of water, paper towels, and of course, wet media brushes. Lastly, you may also want to experiment with adding gum arabic to your watercolor to increase vibrancy and salt to create coarse textures. The great thing about working with watercolor monotypes is that you can push your image with additive marks and pull your image with subtractive marks. Techniques involving tape stencils, pooling, or diluting color with water will be evident in the finished print. There is no need to rush making the image as the watercolor does need to be fully or partially dry when you print. It is required, as you will soon see, to have dampened paper to print on, as this rewets the watercolor paint and allows it to transfer to the paper. Aside from demonstrating this technique, I find it important to convey that when working with photographs, Xeroxes, or drawings as references to making prints, it is crucial to eliminate this crutch at some point. Prints are not drawings or photographs and should fall under the category of something instinctively realized and physically acted upon, which is much more meaningful. Let prints be prints. Once you are ready to print, begin by getting your paper wet. I quickly ran my paper under the kitchen faucet. Next, blot any remaining water away with a clean towel. Your paper should be cold and damp, not wet. Carefully register your paper on top of the painted plate and gently smooth the back of the paper with your hand. I would recommend placing a slip sheet like this wax paper behind your paper as to not disturb the paper's fragile fibers. Carefully burnish with your hand or a flat object like this small bottle. Keep in mind it is not necessary to use excessive pressure as the dampness of the paper allows the watercolor to cleanly lift from the plate's surface. One of the benefits of hand printing is that you have control of how certain areas will print. You may wish to have an evenly printed image, however, there may be times when you wish for certain areas to be more subtle or severe than others. If you have any residual ink, you may want to print a ghost print. This impression will be lighter, but can sometimes be better than the first print.
As mentioned earlier, watercolor monotypes can be made reductively. One can work with rags and water into wet paint, but it is also possible to work into dry paint, similar to removing graphite from a surface with an eraser. After letting a layer of watercolor paint dry, I began by removing selective surface areas of the plate with a combination of razor blades, tape, dry point needles, and other rigid objects from my studio. This process is much more intuitive than physical, but it is so much more akin to drawing than painting that it truly offers a variety of possibilities that are different than in the previous demonstration. Remember that when you are hand printing, you have control over how dark or light, clear or mushy, even or spotty your imagery will print. Again, all of this is directed by the way that you hand print each print you make. 